Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. I wanted to do a highly requested demo for you. Um, couple quick disclaimers again. I'm not a professional colorist. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing. I really have just tried some different techniques and have found some things that work for me. Um, but I've posted some pictures on Instagram and as I've done some completed pages and flip throughs, I've talked a little bit about how I've started to dip my toe in shading. I used to just be kind of a straight colorist and just do, um, you know, straight coloring, just one color. Then I kind of dip my toe into outlining and maybe a darker color marker on the edges and outlines of different things. But one of the techniques that I have found that I absolutely really love is shading and specifically shading with crayons. Um, it's like the easy, messy, simple way to get a little more depth to your picture. So I was working on a picture right now and I figured now is just Time is of the essence. While I'm doing this, I need to just film my process. Um, so I'm currently coloring in 50 Summertime Miniatures. This is by Camelia Angelkova. And I'm coloring this page here. I have about half of it completed, um, already shaded in. Um, and I figured this was a good stopping point because I'm about to switch some colors. I'm about to go on to do some more interesting details um, and sections of this. So um, <clears throat> I just want to explain, and again, I'm still just getting over being sick. So I apologize for kind of my horsey throat. And if I have to clear my throat every once in a while, I just, I apologize. <clears throat> I want to talk through the tools that I use um, for this and kind of some of the techniques that have worked for me. So number one is something that's very important. I think when you're picking your color palette for your page, what I have found works really, really best, especially if you're working with crayons, um, I think, or even colored pencils, think about your palette ahead of time and choose maybe some more desaturated colors or more pastel colors in your pictures to lay as a marker base. So I use alcohol marker base for all of it you can see on the back of the page it's all marker and you'll even see down here at the bottom I was testing different marker colors and different marker combinations this color palette that I chose in particular and this is somewhat of a horrible example because this blotter page is just full um, it called for these colors originally but I ended up choosing these colors I kind of chose and I even kind of desaturated the red a little bit more to a different color here and what I did was I desaturated the colors so that I um, could shade over them so that the pigment would actually show up from the um, um, from the markers that I was using. So there are a couple marker sets that are go-tos for me when I am coloring this because you have to have marker sets that, or, that have light enough color choices. So choose something bright or choose something light really is kind of like the best idea so that because when you're adding crayon and adding any type of shading, I like to have that very highly contrasted type look. Um, the marker sets that are my marker sets of choice, number one are my Tau Tree markers. They have a lovely, these are these skinny alcohol markers. I know I already have these linked down below um, in the description box. There's a lovely shade range of markers. It comes with 120 colors. It's very affordable. They work very well in these miniatures books. And um, <clears throat> ugh, I'm going to show you here. I live a lot in my towel tree markers because look, there's a lot of lighter shades, but even like look at this back page of just delicious pastel colors. I live in these shades a lot. And then some of the lighter hues um, and brighter colors, The this color palette just really lends itself well to um, doing something that I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of shading with. My second favorite marker set that I like to use are the Ohuhu pastel markers. Um, and this comes, I think it's in a pack of 50 from Ohuhu. And where's my swatch cards? These are the swatch cards here. Um, so I'm going to show you a page that I did just recently um, with the pastel markers. So you'll see this is one page that I did recently. This is out of the 50 jungle miniatures. And I use the pastel markers and then use the crayons on top of it um, to do some shading and to create some contrast. So even though the colors start out lighter in the color palette, you can deepen them as you use your crayon over it. 
Um, here is another page. I think I used some crayon um, and this one. <clears throat> and I also did this one. Um, no, I did not use crayon on this one. So apologies about that one, but I definitely used crayon for some shading, especially in the leaves up here, um, on these little flowers, on the lily pads, on the bellies of the frogs. I think you can see fairly well. And I definitely used it um, on this page and did some shading here. Okay. And this was with my Ohuhu pastel markers. The frogs were done, I think, with my towel trees. Yeah, those were done with my towel tree markers. Um, so that is, I think, one really important thing to use. Of course, your next tool that you really need um, in your life if you're doing shading with crayons is of course a set of crayons. This is my preferential color choice in crayons. I looked at quite a few different varieties and packs. I wanted a nice variety of colors but didn't want a lot of duplicate colors and so this 96 set lends itself very well. I will tell you I can't find these on Amazon other than selling them in like a two pack so go pick them up at like a Walmart um, you know or Michaels or things like that. They have these um, Target. I even saw them at like the, at the Hallmark store. Um, they have them everywhere, but they have a nice, beautiful range of colors. I did take out um, the crayons and resort them in a color order that makes sense to me. So you may want to do that um, if you're interested. I also have the Tray Crayola Twistables, but what I find is that the range of colors there, it's only 50, and so it's not as wide of a range, but it's a decent range of colors, um, so that's definitely something you can start with as well. Um, you can also just use any type of regular, like, kid sharpener. Um, I have one with my Twistables. I'm trying not to be, like, too messy here. Um, this is just a simple like uh, sh pencil sharpener. This is a Sergeant Art pencil sharpener. Um, it has, ooh, I'm going to get pencil, uh, crayon shavings everywhere. Um, three little different size holes. Um, I think this second largest hole and this big hole work best for crayons. Um, but you don't need a fancy sharpener, but it's if you want to keep the points of your crayons sharp to do that. All right. So let's talk about, I'm going to start with the leaves here. And one thing that I want to tell you is as I'm choosing colors, you want to choose something that contrasts a little bit with the color that you've laid down as a base. Understand too, the camera always, because of the lighting and things as well, always kind of, um, um, goes out some of the picture a little bit. It doesn't look as highly contrasted in camera as it does in person, but I can definitely tell some differences in the color. One thing you want to point out, I've done this tree already, so I use kind of a darker brown. So you can always use a darker shade of the color that you're interested in doing. But what I did is I chose a brown that had also a... Um, a blacker tone to it to make it a little bit more contrasty with kind of the redder brown I used for the tree. <clears throat> for these little kind of like petal steps that I have here, I chose kind of a red brown, almost kind of like a bean brown, um, to kind of just create some contrast and depth and shadow in here. For the peaches, I had originally chose kind of a light pink, um, pinky peachy color um, to do the peaches, and then I chose a bright orange. Um, I think it was this color orange, which is yellow orange, um, to do kind of around the peach to kind of give it that really kind of more peachy flavor. Um, and then for the leaves, one thing I like to do is to use a green that has a bluish undertone, a cooler undertone to it, um, to kind of create some depth in the leaves, but to make them pop a little bit more. So I always try to choose a shade that's darker than what I have colored with my marker, but something that has an undertone that contrasts with what's there. So if you're looking at like a standardized color wheel, um, I actually think I have an example of a color wheel or I used to have a color wheel that was in here. Yeah. So this is from, um, this came with my Tombow markers. So what I try to do is like, so for example, if my, um, <clears throat> if my leaves fall into this green color, I'll choose the next shade over to be my contrasting color. So if I'm coloring with green, the undertone I might use is blue. If I colored with blue, I might choose purple. If I have purple, I might choose a pink if I can, or maybe even a red if I need something that's a little bit darker. Um, orange and red are really nice together. Um, yellow and orange are really nice together. So I try to kind of stick next to a partner in the color 
wheel to where the colors don't look too off unless I want it to look that way. If I want something to look old, tarnished, something like that, I may use something that's blue, brown, or I may use brown on top of a blue or something to kind of antique it a little bit. But I, for the most part, try to stick to the color wheel as well for a reference. You can find a ton of different color wheels for free online if you don't have one, um, or you can even buy some color wheels off of Amazon if there's something that you need. All right, so let's zoom in. Let's let's really get down to the nitty gritty. So I'm going to start with this leaf here. I've already done this leaf. And what I normally do and kind of how I started was just simply follow the lines that are given by the artist there. Now there are people who are extremely talented with coloring leaves. And they usually, what I find in leaves is that they really color and focus on the middle of the leaf and going outwards. And they usually leave like the edges of the leaf undone. It, to me, it just depends upon what you really think you want to do. Now with crayons, you have to apply a decent amount of pressure. And what I find is you want your tip of your crayon to be somewhat blunt. Um, you, you, you don't want it to be too sharp. So color, you know, if you have a sharp edge on a crayon, you're going to want to, you know, just color on a sheet of paper until you get a flatter edge. Um, because what that does is it keeps it from looking scratchy or these sharp lines, um, you know, on whatever you're coloring. Um, also I color, if you notice in very tiny circles. So I try not to color like just straight lines, straight lines, straight line you know, or color, um, just a straight line, real dark, because you want the color to kind of blend into itself and you don't want it to look like, um, you don't really want it to look like it's, you know, just like stands out totally separate. I also don't worry too much about staying in the exact lines of the page because when you use crayon, it's kind of got this diffuse look to it already. So if it goes a little bit over, it almost I find gives a softer effect than if you were to, you know, just totally stay in the line. So I don't really let that bother me. Um, and um, I really think overall it doesn't take away from the image itself. Now it's all trial and error. What I may like on a page or a um, color combination that I may like or something may not be your jam. I like light, bright, fun colors. I'm not very much of a neutral girl. Um, so maybe the colors that I choose are not right. There are people who are also great at blending and shading. And really what I'm doing is less blending and more shading. Um, I'll be honest, I think from a technicality, like if, you know, somebody's probably going to tell me that in the comments below as well as that, hey, you're not really like blending, you're shading. And honestly, that is what I'm doing. I'm using one color. Um, I could, if I was super fancy and had a ton of time and really cared, utilize multiple colors in here, um, maybe create different color leaves or things like that, um, or create, you know, more different tones or something in what I'm doing. But honestly, I'm trying to just give some more life to the page because while I told you guys, I think maybe you're learning about this for me, or maybe you're new and welcome, um, I'm a somewhat lazy colorist, but I want to have some cool effects and practice some different things. So if a page is going to take me multiple days, um, that's very discouraging to me. I really like to sit down and to complete a page, um, you know, within a day. And so, um, and when I say within a day, I usually only have maximum about two to three hours maximum in a day <clears throat> to color. And so um, I try to choose things that I know I can complete within that time frame. And so um, choosing to do one of these miniatures is great because it's a smaller image. This one, however, is um, kind of taking me a while. Um, I also kind of stewed over the color palette for a long time. I don't know still that I'm quite satisfied with it, but what I find is usually once I add all my finishing touches, my white gel pen, my shading with my crayon, it always seems to just kind of come together. And I really feel like just using the details of crayons, colored pencils, I mean, you can, this technique is not exclusive to crayons. You can do this with, with um, I've done this plenty of times 
and actually originally started this using my Prismacolor pencils. Um, and, uh, but the thing is though, is I just found that I, I don't know, there's just an ease of using crayons. And what I like about crayons too, is that they're number one, like super inexpensive. You can replace this entire set for what it would cost you for like a few Prismacolor colored pencils. You're not having to sharpen them frequently. And, um, honestly they leave that kind of same similar waxy feel that a Prismacolor does. Um, but I find them less overwhelming, um, to use and they're better for me because they're slightly bigger to hold in the hand. And so to me, they just feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is a, um, gray shade and just try to go over some of this stonework here, um, just to give a little bit more depth to the stone. Um, and then I'll probably start working on the doors. And so what I'm doing here is just adding just kind of that darker shade around the stone. And I think this, I'm just using kind of a neutral gray. Um, but what you also could do would be to, um, you know, if you wanted to, to add maybe like a blue, like if you wanted to do a blue or a teal over this or something, you could definitely do that too. And use again, a more contrasting color. Um, and I hope you guys are able to see this on camera, but I'm kind of trying to explain this as best as I can. Um, and I just kind of try to go wherever I think natural shadow would go. I'm not really good at that. Um, so I usually try to follow the lines. Like I see a lot of little squiggles here at the bottom of this stone. So I take my gray kind of all the way up there. Um, to add some more in that area. And um, probably a lot of you who may be watching this, I've probably learned some of these techniques from you <laughs> um, in trying to learn how to shade and things like that. So there are definitely many of you who I've learned a lot of these tips from. So if you, if you're like, oh, I've done this before and I probably taught you how to do this, like give a shout out, take some credit because it certainly is um, something I've really enjoyed. All right, let's take a look at, so now it's time for me to do these doors and to kind of figure out in the little houses to kind of figure out how I want to shade. Um, so let's start with this one up here. Um, I'm a little bit lost right now on maybe what I want to shade the yellow with. I may use an orange. Um, maybe kind of a, see, I'm going to use, I think like a, um, there's a color called Razzmatazz. Yeah, it's this one right here that I really like. This is like a pinky red um, and it's nice and bright and um you may be freaking out because I don't really test it on paper. So one thing too, if you're afraid of what color you're using, use the swatches like down at the bottom, draw some big swatches of marker. This is what I kind of did at first when I was less familiar with shade names and things like that. Um, draw some big swatches of marker on a blank sheet of paper of the colors you use in the picture. And then you can go over it in any gel pen color, crayon color, you know, whatever it is you're using to decorate your page and see how it lays on top and see like, Oh, am I happy or am, does this, you know, does this spark joy? Does this bring me joy using this color over this marker? And you can kind of test it out there. I've used these crayons enough times now that I know some of the colors. Plus, honestly, if I color with a color that I'm not super happy with, I kind of start off with light pressure and then kind of work my way up um, so that if I need to color over it with crayons, you can kind of color over them without much, um, um, without much issue. And then as I'm comfortable with the color, I kind of just slowly lay on the pressure um, to make it a little bit more um, defined. So it's really, really guys simple as that. I'm trying not to make it complicated. Um, where is my tissue? Excuse me one minute. Sorry, just wipe my nose. Um, so yeah, this Razzmatazz color, I'm a huge fan of. I use this one a lot. Razzmatazz is my jam. So you see how, hopefully you can see, 
Let me zoom in a little bit more. You can kind of see how that added just a little bit to that um, door. Now, let me look at, there's not a great variety of different yellows here. There is this mustardy yellow called Goldenrod. Um, let me test this. Is that going to be enough contrast? That might be. Okay, so let's see how this one looks. Okay, so if I do that in that section, see, I can't see that very well. So that does not spark me some joy. Um, let's try this one. This is macaroni and cheese. My hesitation in using a deeper orange is that I have orange already in the kind of the peach. Um, and so I don't want to really use too deep of an orange and I don't really want it to look orange I really want it to look still very yellow so I want whatever I'm using to have this kind of yellow orange vibe so this macaroni and cheese is pretty good um because it still is giving me that orange or that yellow glow without being too strong. Um, okay, so what do we think? I think that added a little something. Probably the least amounts. Um, the other thing too that I like about using crayons is that I can use gel pen over it. Now, you do have to use a pretty opaque um, gel pen. I like to use, and you'll see, the, this is the Uniball Signo. So if I want to add some white gel pen details and stuff later, I, I don't have a hard time with it. So I do also really like it for that point. All right, so macaroni and cheese, I'm also going to use for this orange door down here, for this yellow door down here, just to add again some detail here and some depth to that door there all right so pink so pink I do really like to use like a blue or a purple um but I think yeah um let's go with actually this might be really pretty um that or this one whoops that might be too dark Let's start with this, or what is this color here? Violet red, so that's gonna give me a redder tone. Let me just swatch these real quick and see which ones I like. I do also have, just FYI, my crayons swatched. I don't reference that terribly often because I find it's easy to just swatch. Actually, I like that color. Let's start with this one and see how we like it. This is going to be the color Tickle Me Pink. And so we're going to use this on this door here. Now I made a little boo-boo that I'm also kind of trying to cover up a little bit. Um, Tickle Me Pink is a no-go. That is not dark enough. Um, what are you? Jazzberry Jam? What do you look like? You look pretty good. So I don't know if you can really tell. I'm hoping that you can't. I actually started to use the wrong marker color there. I used my red instead of my pink. And so I'm kind of trying to hope to blend in a little bit of some of my shading to make it not look as obvious. It still may look somewhat obvious, but you know what? it's gonna be okay. And I think from a distance, I don't think you're really gonna be able to tell. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that color. So let's do that for the house. I'm trying to avoid it. Some of you are probably like, why? I'm trying to avoid it looking just like a Barbie playhouse. Because when I put the pink and purple together, I was like, oh, that might look nice. And then I did it, and I was like, oh, this looks just like a Barbie playhouse. Um, I need to fix this. <laughs> I need this to look a little more like um, 
cute and whimsy colors, not not so much like, you know, super curly Barbie Playhouse like, like little kid. Yeah, I wonder who lives in these little houses. Like, I wonder when Camelia Angelkova put this together, like, who did she imagine? Is this like a squirrel house? Are these bird houses, maybe? I guess maybe that makes sense. They're like bird houses um, for the birds to come live in and to live their best life. Um, okay. All right, what are we thinking? So I hope you can kind of see it's really, really, really starting to bring some good life um, into this. All right, so let's take a look at this purple door. So what I do want to do for purple is I think I just want to use, yeah, this is like royal purple. So this is going to be, I think, a super dark purple. Yeah, but it's almost got a little bit of a blue undertone to it, which is perfect. So it brings in yet like another another color to contrast with what I have. So just think, like I said, I think that's just adds, oh my gosh, just so much depth and detail to a page. Just simply doing like this, like this is just, it's so easy guys. Like how many minutes have we been filming? Oh my gosh, we've been filming for 26 minutes. Um, it's actually somewhat surprising me that it's taken me this long to do this part of the page. Uh, I mean, honestly, a lot of it was just me explaining to you what I use and stuff too, and kind of some techniques before I go into it. But I mean, this entire page to do this crayon didn't take hardly any time. Probably took me half an hour to do the entire page. And it adds just some so much to the page itself that... Um, it's just, it's so, it's so, so worth it in the end. Um, I'm going to add a bit of orange to this. Let's kind of give that a glow. I'm even going to put a little bit of some red in there. Okay. Um, beautiful. So that is my technique for shading with crayon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the rest of my details and stuff here. I think I may do a time lapse just so you can still see my process for that. And then we will come back at the end and I'll show you my completed page. I'll see you in a minute. Bye. So here's the completed page. I actually decided against going um, kind of crazy or Looney Tunes because I just really like how the page turned out. Um, what I added here were just a few little things. I added some glitter gel pen simply to the little hearts on the doors and to um, the little flame that's there. I used my Jelly Roll Metallic gel pen to go through all of the hardware on each of the doors to just give kind of a gold um, look and shine. Let me take that out so you can really see the completed page. Um, and then I used my white gel pen to just add a couple of little accents on the tree to kind of emphasize some of the branches um, and stuff in the tree. Other than that, I used a black fine liner. This is the Tri Plus Fine Liner to fill in some of the hardware and things as well. Um, other than that, that is it. I really wanted the um, just crayon work and stuff to kind of stand out. I feel like it looks really fun and fresh, and I hope you can kind of see that the crayon really kind of adds and gives some life to the picture. Um, just to make it look really fun and scrumptious and um, bring everything together. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this. If, there anything, if there's anything else you would like to see me demo, I'm happy to do that. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So I hope you all have a rest of, that you have the rest of your day is a beautiful day. And I will see you again next time. Bye everyone.